Hello. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I am wanting to share with you about the art show that just opened for me about two weeks ago. I filmed a video early on in the process and I shared with you what it was like preparing for the art show, coming up with ideas, making work and brainstorming. And now we're on the other side, the show is all done. And so I wanted to finish that behind the scenes sharing of the process. So you're gonna see lots of work being made. You're gonna hear me talk about what was going on in my head during this show. So hopefully it'll be a good, insightful and entertaining video. This video is sponsored by, of course, my favorite Ana Luisa, which is a wonderful jewelry company. I am wearing their earrings today that I actually just got. First time wearing them. I'm wearing a couple of their rings today. This is my engagement ring, not Ana Luisa, but also special. Anyways, um, love this company. They make really beautiful jewelry, really classy jewelry that you can wear every day as staples or stuff that you can wear on more fancy occasions. I own so much of their stuff and I love it. It has not tarnished. I've had like this ring for years now. I don't know how long it's been, but it's it looks just as good as the day I got it in the mail. As I mentioned in my last video that was sponsored by Ana Luisa, which I think was actually my last video on this channel because I don't post that often. I recently got my ears pierced and so I was so excited to start ordering earrings from Ana Luisa. Um, <laughs> what I also love about Ana Luisa is that they are earth friendly, they're carbon neutral and climate neutral certified and their packaging is not plastic. It's these cute little cloth containers. Um, I keep all of them. This is not all that I have, but this is most of it. They're also very buyer friendly. All of their products come with a two year warranty and they do lots of testing. So they make sure that their jewelry won't like tarnish or irritate your skin or whatever. And if you're not completely satisfied, they offer a replacement or reimbursement with no questions asked. Also, they're pretty affordable with prices starting at just $39. So go check it out. There's a link in my description box that you can go click on. There's a discount code there as well. And and yeah, that's my spiel about Ana Luisa. So let's get on to the main part of the video. Chai. So as I mentioned, I've done kind of a part one video about this art show, but we are gonna start all the way back at the beginning, which was in January, where I first got contacted by the lady in charge of the gallery. So some exciting things are in the works. I just met a friend for coffee, and she and I haven't talked in like a year, and we had a really, really good conversation. Her church owns a gallery, and she's one of the curators for that gallery. And she was just asking me if I'd want to have a show. Of course, I said yes. It was really, really beautiful timing because there's lots of things that I had been thinking about or starting art projects on that actually were able to inform this show. We're going to walk through everything. I'll show you all the things I created and just, yeah, go through the whole process. So this little watercolor book is the first manifestation of what this show was going to look like and i started this even before i knew about the show i started this practice as a way to notice things more to notice beauty more whenever i do notice things like a, a beautiful scene with really nice composition or whatever i would record that in the watercolor journal and i really really loved that it's a simple practice it doesn't take too long and it's enjoyable i started that at the beginning of the year and that actually ended up being really influential into the show later on. After getting news about the show, I did do a little bit of playing around in my studio. I actually came up with what I wanted the show to be soon after she told me about it, like maybe even in our conversation, um, because something that had been on my mind already was wanting to do some sort of collaboration with my dad, who is a poet. When this show opportunity landed in my lap, I thought this would be a great way to see that idea come to life. So I did have the concept loosely. I didn't know what themes it would be. I didn't know anything besides the fact that I wanted to collaborate with my dad. I just took to the studio to play around and just kind of have fun with art so that hopefully the inspiration would follow. February did not see much work being made. 
I did a little bit in my watercolor journal, but most of my energy was going towards trying to get out of um, a very anxious space that I had found myself in. I was really anxious, I was really stressed, and I just wasn't functioning at my best because of all the anxiety that I was dealing with. So, you know, when that happens, it is totally okay to need to take a break from some things. So, of, of course, I continued working. I have an online job that I do, so I continued that. I worked on a couple commissions that I had, tried to stick to a routine of journey journaling and exercising and trying to eat well and just doing all these things that would hopefully bring me back to a more healthy and comfortable place and it worked it, it did take a lot of the month for me to do that but I think I I took the time I needed in February to help get myself back on track when we moved into March I felt a lot better and a lot more ready to work some more on this show. So March brought another studio play day, if you want to call it that, when I didn't really know what the themes of the show would be, but I did want to play around with art and just seeing if I could find something that really spoke to me. This is where the watercolor journal comes back in. Something I realized was that if this is a show where art responds to poetry, I want the art itself to look poetic. If that doesn't make sense to you, I don't really know how else to explain that but that helped get me into the right mindset to make work for this show. So the watercolor journal, I really felt that the pieces in there just looked so poetic and I started experimenting with making them bigger. And I did this with acrylic paint, I did this with watercolor as well. The bigger paintings didn't quite have the same effect as the smaller pieces, but I continued to play around. Something I also started on in March was a dollhouse. In 2022, I had been seeing a lot of TikToks where people were making miniatures and it was just trending on my feed and inspiring me so much. I started buying doll houses from a local thrift store and my friend also bought me this particular doll house for Christmas and it came in handy. I started to take out all the paper from inside and clean it and that was a really long process and just get it ready to go for the next step. So April. April I look back on as such a magical beautiful month. It was spring, perfect weather, birds chirping spring with the flowers all growing and I was feeling so inspired during this time. Back in January, I forgot to mention this, but back in January, I had discovered the poet Mary Oliver. I was reading Mary Oliver this year, but especially in April, it just, the spring weather provided such a good backdrop to read her poetry. And both of those things were really inspiring me as I went about my work in the studio. I was also reading the book The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. I started this book several years ago and it's an amazing book. I just occasionally kind of put it aside because I get distracted by another book, but it really is a truly amazing book and dwells so much on creativity and helping you find your creativity again or to just nurture it. All three of those things, Mary Oliver, The Artist's Way, and The Spring Weather provided such a beautiful environment for me to make work and I felt like I was on such a creative high. I did a little bit more on the dollhouse this month. I spray painted the outside and the inside and then I painted the inside to look like it had hardwood floors and painted walls. Because the weather was so beautiful, I worked outside a lot this month. I would either sit on my porch or I would lay a blanket on the yard, just soak in the beauty around me. I revisited some paintings I had done previously that I didn't totally feel like they were done. And I also revisited the house painting again. I don't know why, but this one just really spoke to me and I, I did it over and over again trying to get it to feel like the watercolor painting or to get it to take on a new a new feeling that I loved just as well. Genevieve. Hi girl. 
Over the past couple years, I've become primarily a painter, but in this show, I really wanted to step outside of that box a little bit, and I definitely did that with the dollhouse, but I also did that with incorporating charcoal into some of my work. I really like working with charcoal. It does get super messy, but it has just this beautiful, like this, this sort of moodiness that it can evoke. So I decided to start on some black and white pieces that directly responded to my dad's poem about the rising sun and the mist that rises with the sun. Right now I'm going to tour the gallery that my art will be in, um, my solo show in June. Yay! It is smaller than I imagined it to be, but that's a really good thing because I was already getting a little bit overwhelmed. I was imagining a gallery a, like as big as the one that I had my senior show in. Um, and anyways, 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 I'm really excited. And even more excited after seeing, you know, I can handle <laughs> the gallery. So all good things. After seeing the gallery, I felt a lot more relaxed about actually being able to fill the space, but I still definitely had a ways to go with making the, the work all just fit together with the poetry and nailing down a theme. And so I put it all on a spreadsheet. I put all the work I'd done on a spreadsheet so that I could see it all together because I don't really have a studio. I have a lot of space to create in, but I don't have a lot of space to hang up work on the walls. So it was helpful to put it all out on this spreadsheet. This helped me plan future pieces and also just see what I'd done so far so I could get an idea of the vibe of the show. I don't exactly remember when it happened, but I decided that I was getting more drawn to my dad's poetry that kind of dealt with loneliness and isolation or being introverted those are the pieces that i felt like i could relate to in my personal life and also in my relationship with him and so that kind of became what i was focusing on and i eventually settled on making the theme of the show dealing with like those feelings of isolation and loneliness but then also finding a home and finding a way through that A little bit later on, I had this whole fascination with dyeing things and printing with natural elements. At first, I just used this dye that I just had in my studio. I think it's an alcohol-based ink, or maybe it's an acrylic-based ink. I think it's acrylic. So I played around with that, and then I also got interested with using flowers and plants to make prints with. I'm having so much fun right now. Um, I'm experimenting with printing with plants and I've just simply been using a hammer and plants and paper and parchment paper. Um, and I've just been hammering the plants down onto the paper and um, yeah, it's been really fun. It's been turning out pretty good. This one, I loved it so much with the plants already, like with the plants still on it that I just left the plants on it. Um, we'll see what happens They'll, whenever they dry out and stuff. Um, I try. I experimented doing it on canvas cloth, and I really like how that turned out, especially with this print. I tried it again with another plant, and it, and it didn't turn out too great. So for the most part, I've been just doing it on paper. I really love this tiny little one. It's so cute. This is what I just did that I really love. So it's super fun. I love it. I believe that this is where you can most clearly see the impact of nature, like the spring weather, and Mary Oliver showing up in my work for this show. I was just so entranced with the beauty of the world, and I embraced that into my art.
so I'm here with the dollhouse and I'm trying to figure out a few things just logistics wise before logistics is that am I using that word properly I'm trying to figure out a few things before I continue with it um just like planning what's gonna happen next so I was fiddling around with some curtains obviously the red tape is just there to like hold it up temporarily I have this scrap cloth from a some dresses that I or from a dress that I own. I don't know if I'm feeling the curtains. So then I was thinking like maybe some blinds. I decided that I don't really know how I feel about people being able to look into this house and see clearly because what this is trying to like remind you of or trying to capture is when you're walking at night through a neighborhood. I mean, I don't know how many people do that, but I like to take night walks sometimes because it's just nice and peaceful. Um, and I like to walk through the neighborhood and sometimes, you know, somebody's house light will be on and it's just this warm glow coming from their house. And it's not like I'm trying to look into the house or anything. So that's why I don't really want people to be able to like see clearly inside this house. Um, but it's just that feeling of like, you know, there's, there's maybe a family on the inside there and maybe sitting down to have a meal or something, or there's like this sense of like warmth and togetherness on the inside of that house. And then on the outside, it's just like this contrast between the warmth on the inside and the kind of mysterious, like maybe cold night that you're walking through. And I love that juxtaposition. And so I was trying to capture that with this house. And I think I'm gonna go for some windows that are a little bit uh, distorted because, and this kind of ties into my Memorialize series. I want people to be able to see inside, but not really make out shape. So I want it to be more abstracted and kind of blurry. And I've been sitting here trying to figure out what material to use for a while now, experimenting with different materials. Like this is parchment paper, which from far away, you can't see anything, which isn't great. From up close, you can see, like you can see my thumb there, but I want people to be able to see more than just this. I've experimented with clear plastic, like this, kind of trying to layer it up, but it's it. this one is like really reflective and I didn't really like that. Finally, I tried out um, this binder sheet. I have already cut it up, but it is literally perfect. Um, hold it up like this and like everything's blurry and I could even double it up if I wanted to, to make things a little bit more distorted. So I think this is what I'm gonna use on the windows now. I'm really excited about that because again, it'll tie into my Memorialize series, which is a bunch of really abstracted and kind of blurry images um, to represent my memories. I think this will just be a cool little continuation of that theme. So you can see the windows make it a little bit blurry, which is exactly what I want. I love that you can't like make out any details. So cute. Okay, I just made blinds, and as you can imagine, it takes quite a long time to do this. Um, simply cut pieces of paper and then threaded them all together. Really love the way this looks. I'm trying to decide if it's worth doing this for all the windows or not. So we've made it to June. And June is the month of the show. The show opened on June 23. So obviously this is crunch time. This is me buckling down and working every week, every day on this show. I had other ideas in my head or ideas that I hadn't even thought of yet that were going to go in the show, but I didn't know what those would be yet. So I decided to go with what I knew needed to be done and I focused on finishing the dollhouse. I was really happy with it when it all came together. I know I put a lot of work on things that went on the interior of the dollhouse and you can't even see them clearly because the windows are blurry, but I felt it was important to add those details so that when people looked into the house, even though it was blurry, they would recognize a living space. Overall, the dollhouse is the absolute cutest part of this show. I went to another piece that I already knew, something that I didn't have to create a new idea for, and that was the charcoal rising sun pictures. 
I actually decided to do these all over again. What I was going to do was just create two more because I had already created three and I wanted the sequence of the rising sun to be a total of five pictures. But I decided that I could do it better the second time. Once I had all these finished pieces, I decided that I wanted to put all these pieces in the gallery digitally from the photos that I had taken when I visited it because I knew it was a smaller space and I thought that I might just have enough pieces to fill the show. And I actually ended up having more than I needed. Like I had a full show right there just based on amount. And I realized that I only needed one more piece. For that piece, I decided to do a night painting a painting of a house at night to kind of connect the dollhouse to the rest of the show a little bit more. I did start that piece, but then I put off finishing it just so I could start wiring all the pieces for the gallery and get everything basically ready to go. Also, while I was drawing this whole gallery setup, I got what felt like a crazy idea to make a little room for my dollhouse because I wanted a light to be shining out of it but if that was shining just in the main gallery space with nothing enclosing it it wouldn't have the same effect so I decided that I would do a little PVC pipe room and I actually didn't know if that would work out I didn't know if I would have time but I planned to do that the week of the show because the show opened on Friday and so I knew I would potentially have time to do it in the week leading up to that. So we get to the week of the show on I think Sunday I wired everything, I signed everything, I decided prices. In this week to maybe two week span is when I like wrote my artist statement, got my dad to write his artist statement, came up with the prices, um, did a bunch of other little like logistics things and then of course got everything ready to actually hang up on the walls. Then on Monday of this week, I went to the gallery for the first setup and I got most things up at that point. Then I was able to finish my house at night painting. I had painted it only partially before doing the first setup because I wanted to spend the time on wiring pieces and getting them ready to go. And I knew I could just do some finishing touches and finishing up some paintings the week of the show. So I finished that piece and then bought a bunch of PVC pipe and some black sheets and went back to the gallery one night. And my fiance and I put this little room together to display the dollhouse in. And then before I knew it, it was opening day. I came to the gallery early so that we could do some more finishing touches and I could help with whatever setup needed to be done before people came. I was literally working up until like the first person came. So I was a little bit flustered when the show began technically, but it was honest, like it was chill. It was, it was fine. about anything, we'd love to talk with you guys about it, either of us. 
so don't hesitate. It's really cool being the opening act for your daughter, <laughs> and, you know, with her art. But um, I saw the earth this morning lose its soul, a vapor disembodied without form that hovered in a hesitation low above the waters trying to keep warm to find again the dreams the new sun stole. But those are dreams belonging to the night that souls unfleshed have no strength to retain. For dreamless mistiness is all they know. And even that will dissipate like rain evaporating in the heat contrived. My dad did several poetry readings during the opening, and those went really well. He did about five of them. I cried during one of them. The reception of the show was really nice. We had so many friends and family come out to see it. I had this little interactive section of the show where I invited people to respond to what they had seen so far, either through poetry or just a drawing. And I got a lot of people doing that so it was really cool to read those afterwards and yeah that was that is it for the process of my second ever solo show from idea creation to the final show that is it for walking you guys through the process i did want to just say some final words here about this show i really feel like as I've kind of touched on already in this video with just things and coincidences happening and things working out so well, I really feel like this show was an experience with faith. It's not a directly spiritual experience, but I believe I experienced faith in the creative process. Something that's been on my mind this year in things that I'm reading and conversations that I'm happening and projects that I'm doing has been the connection between God, love, and creativity. God loves, and because he loves, he creates. We love, and because we love, we create. We create out of a love for life, a love for people, a love for truth, a love for beauty, etc., etc., etc. And so I really think all those things are intrinsically connected, and I also think creativity is core to who we are as humans. And that might be a video for another time. I think some people would be like, okay, Darcy, hold up. I'm not creative at all. And it's easy for you to say that as an artist. Like, artists love to tell people they're creative, but they don't know a thing about me. I understand. Um, I know I know. lots of artists always say, oh yeah, like, everybody's creative, or it really just takes practice, blah, 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 blah. The thing is, the way we see creativity in society typically is in direct relation to the arts, whether it's music or visual art, painting, photography, dance, theater. We see creativity as tied to those things, but we don't see how creativity shows up in our day-to-day -day life, but it's literally everywhere. Every new idea you have, every new thing you create, whether it's something that's obviously art or something practical, whatever. We're always using our brains to come up with something new, and that's creativity. That's something that's unique to us out of all the life on this planet. We're thinking about creating things. We're thinking about new ideas, coming up with new things. So creativity is pretty core to who we are. That was a bit of a tangent, but I just, I have a new perspective on creativity and faith and spirituality this year. And so that's something I've been learning. And it was really cool to have that be on my mind while I'm creating work for the show. And creating work for the show, you know, it was different this year, this, this show, because I was creating lots of different pieces as opposed to taking the same idea and reiterating it 70 something times, which is what I did for my last show right behind me. I had to come up with a new idea for each piece in this show. And I kind of had to go almost on blind faith. I just had to trust the process. I had to work in the studio and create things that I wasn't even sure were, were going to go in the show. But because I did that, more inspiration came to me, more creative energy came to me, and I was not let down by putting my faith in the process, by putting my faith in that the source of creativity would grant me the creativity I needed. I was not let down by that. And I just think that is so cool. And um, I was really given that experience because I worked on this show. That's the story of my second ever 
solo show. It was a dual show with my dad, so not technically a solo show, but I'm really proud of myself. I'm really proud of how everything came together. And it was just a beautiful experience as well to be able to share with my dad and work together as artists. So that is the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you got something out of it, some insight, some inspiration. Don't forget to check out Ana Luisa. Check out these really cute earrings, all their other really cute stuff. Click the link in my description to go to their website and the coupon code. Don't forget to use that to get a discount. And yeah, um, I'll see you in the next video or follow me on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook because I post on those places a lot more often. Thanks for watching. Bye.